uh, head chef, executive chef, chef uh, Brian McCarthy from Greens. He's in studio, guys. This is on Facebook Live as I'm talking. Good morning, chef. Good morning, Neil. And I've just got to look at your list of suppliers. And in fairness to you, you really are punching um, in, the, in the heavyweight when it comes to the suppliers that you've got bringing in produce from all over the county and the country. But talk to me about the English market. Um, the English market... Definitely one of our our, our strong suppliers, uh, particularly uh, I'd say Tim in the Chicken Inn. Um, going to be using his chicken stock in a dish I'm going to cook for you in a minute. Yeah. Um, but what more can you say about the English market? Well, except that we're lucky to have it. We are very, very lucky to have it. Um, Tom Durkin would be an- another one of our suppliers from the English market. It's like, where, where, what other city in Ireland can you go to, to the one market and pick up everything you need yeah, for you, any meal? You, you, you deal with an awful lot of small businesses, single traders, people working away themselves, don't you? I mean, yeah, the list very, is endless. Very, very small suppliers. A lot of them would be one, two or three product suppliers. A lot of them would supply, would supply into the English market as well so you can get their products there and uh, that's that's our ethos is to, to support, the, support those small producers who are doing something amazing So is that why you're call, do you, you, you call your cooking uh, that you're a locavore what does that mean? So it's basically that like a carnivore a locavore is to support everything in your local community be it from the artists to the suppliers to the producers like the, even the art on the restaurant walls is done by three very young cork, cork artists and that, that's our entire ethos ok so you're doing all the food for greens but you're also doing the really funky menu and the food on offer in cask aren't you yeah we are okay. um, it's it's our it's our little sister we call it <laughs> so and it's been a huge success the guys there are doing an amazing job ok and uh, you know Nationally and internationally, Carl Dalton finished twelfth in the world at the the World Cocktail Championships there back in uh, in November. They've got it all. So they have. They have it all. And it's a good spot to visit at Christmas time. Your food is terrific. Now, thank you for coming in this morning. Uh, we could talk all day about turkeys and hams, but that's okay too. But what have you got in mind here? Is this a is this a starter or is it a side? It's a side, but uh, it can also, if you're going to have some leftover probably, and it can also be turned into a soup the next day where you could take the the carcass from your turkey and make a stock and just water it down with some stock. Okay, so a a lovely hearty soup. The idea is to try and keep it simple anyway, with stuff that people can get their hands on, by and large anyway. That's it. So I see butter beans there and I see lardons of bacon and I'm not quite sure what I see a lot of mushrooms going on. Just talk us through that. So we have in here, we've got some smoked bacon and some smoked sausage and both of them can be gotten the pigs back in the English market. We have some chestnuts, some shallots and some Ballyhora shiitake mushrooms. Mm. which are produced by Mark and Lucy in, in Ballyhara Mountains. Okay, so a log of olive oil. You chopped all of those in, in they went. You kind of have, have par-cooked par them there, I think, have you? Yeah, just to... You're driving people crazy the, here with smells. Keep, don't want to set off the fire alarms, so I uh, just got, a, got them going a small bit first. But uh, basically, you just sweat off the shallots. Um, I've also got some, uh, some, some smoked seaweed powder in there as well that comes what? from the Laughing Oyster in West Cork. Smoked seaweed powder. Smoked seaweed powder, seaweed powder yeah. It, it gives great, a great depth oh, of flavour to that in Tesco, am I? No, but you can get it in Super Value. So, um, <laughs> okay. But uh, it's a... It's Basically, you sweat off the shallots with the seaweed powder and a little bit of butter and a little bit of a little bit of Irish rapeseed oil, and then you add your smoke. not olive oil, no, no. Is it because Support. rapeseed oil is? It's Irish. Get away. So we use New Grange Gold. Um, it's it's you know we use olive oil as well, but uh, we we, we stick Irish. to the, the, yeah, the Mediterranean. It's supposed to be healthier like for you as well, anyway. It? it is. It's a it's hard. It's a it's a cold pressed uh, virgin rapeseed oil, which it's also got a higher smoking point, so it's much healthier to cook with. Okay, so that's um, that's. Frying away there, if you like, for want of a better sautéing, I think is the term, that's, isn't it? That's the term, sautéing. Sautéing. So you, you basically sauté your shallots, the, the mushrooms, the smoked bacon and the smoked sausage with the seaweed powder. Um, we've also got a, a few chestnuts in there for a bit of seasonality. seasonality. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> the, idea, the idea is that you get all those flavours going and... Uh, we're going to finish it then with the butter beans and some chicken stock and a little cream and some black cabbage and some kale, which come from... We, we buy black cabbage and kale from three different small producers. One would be Richard's Organic Farm in Mallow. Another would be Kilbrack Farm in, uh, in Donnerill. Let him have a and listen to Waterfall that. Farms as well. Get, the mic, get your mic down into that there for a bit of an old uh, sample of that beautiful sound. That's it. There we go, sizzling away. All right, I'm back to you again now. The mic back to you. Yeah. And once you get the a little bit of color on the on the bacon and the sausage, that's when you're releasing those those natural flavors and the oils, and you're getting the the sugars burning, and that's that's what you want. It's a and very very 
festive type of a, it's it's actually okay it could be a starter but it certainly would be a very serious uh, side dish you know you wouldn't need much else maybe a few sprouts and a couple of roast poppies and away you go that you can actually put brussels sprouts into this and it's a great way of doing brussels sprouts because you can shred them up and add them at the very end and you know I'm sure we've all had an overcooked sprout in our time everybody and does it's, everything it's they not, can to, it's, dis- it's to disguise exactly, the sprout <laughs> it's not exactly the best flavour in the world okay what went sprout. in there now that was a bit of chicken stock and uh, a little bit of cream. Okay. And I also put a little mushroom powder in there as well when and I was making sake, the sauce. for God's sake, drain off the butter beans in the can. <laughs> you don't rinse them or anything, just get rid of the juices? No, I'd, I'd pre-rinse them a little bit just to, to, to save a little time. You can, you can also buy the butter beans raw and soak them yourself overnight. Forget about it. But uh, I, I reckon on Christmas Day you have enough to be doing besides That's worrying about cooking, it, cooking your own butter beans. Yeah, yeah. And we have some the black cabbage and the... And Black the kale, cabbage. which are, I have never heard of that. Which it's a uh, cavel cavelo nero is the is the the. The proper term. Well, but, come here if you can't get your hands black on cabbage. black cabbage, cabbage is okay, is it? Well, it is. Yeah, you can use any cabbage you want. But you've um, cooked it now. That's not going in there raw. No, it was blanched a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Just in in some uh, in some boiling water and any tips some cold for the water. turkey while that's happening? Um, so for this twenty for, minutes a pound is only for, nonsense. For um, well, I, t- I would say thirty three minutes per to be totally safe. If you were to go by the FSAI, forget about that. Should it be dry like a shoe? I would. Yeah, I would be. I would be going with about about twenty minutes per pound for an unstuffed cur- turkey and 25 minutes per pound for a stuffed But, but that could turkey. be five hours. It, it could the be. Turkey be I, knocking on I the door. Let me out. I, I also, I don't use the, I don't use it open in the oven. I use a double oven oven method where you'd use uh, layers of tin foil and you'd encase the turkey in it and cook it for 25 minutes per pound stuffed like that. And for the last half an hour, you remove the tin foil. Oh, get that off and to brown up. It's, it's completely, completely pale at this stage, and because the skin is completely cooked, it browns up really, really fast. Then you can baste it. Then at the end, and it's probably the juiciest turkey you're ever going to get. I also brine it beforehand for about twelve hours in a ten percent salt and two percent sugar. Ah, but you wish like you're the professional. Yeah, for the rest of the us brine, mean. the brining. It's, allows the turkey to take on moisture and a bit of salt which allows it to retain more moisture yeah, afterwards. Yeah, they're the tricks of the trade. That's some of the tricks. Yeah. That's, that's And the I'd idea, all, everybody tells me that it's all about pre-prep, getting as much done as you can, delegating, doing it the day before. That's it. That, like this recipe, a, a lot of these things can be done the day before and just finished off last minute. Yeah, okay. Okay, so how long is that going to take? Um, it's going to take, because of the pre-work, it's just take a, maybe a minute or two to heat up. And uh, and then it's pretty much done. Fabulous looking, and there's a lot of there's a lot of food in there. There's a lot of ingredients. There is, there. and the, the it, it's good ingredients, and it's uh, it's healthy, and you know there's not a lot of butter, not a lot of cream. It's 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 mainly the stock. Yeah, there's bacon and smoked sausage. I'm not a huge fan of cream. I think it's way overused. You know, particularly in chowders. You know, we were talking about this earlier on. Yeah, you can taste uh, nothing uh, but the cream. I would I would agree with you completely that that a, a stock based chowder or or a, a spicy chowder is just as nice as a cream based chowder, or just put less cream in it. More more, more sh- fish and more less fish. cream. Yeah, okay. Listen, can we give away uh, maybe lunch or something from in greens at a time when you're not too busy? Yeah, um, I would love to give away a lunch for four in greens. Okay, um, all right. e- Even between Christmas and the New Year, it's a great time to, to get out with the family or Absolutely. meet friends or yeah, anything like absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay, let's do that and uh, uh, let's get to taste some of this. Any other any other tips for starters or desserts or anything? Um, I, I would say on the Brussels sprouts... Don't overcook them. Um, I like to stir fry them. I do too. Uh, shred Chop them, them in shred, half. Yeah, I do, even I cut quarters, shred them up. Two seconds, a bit of sesame oil, a bit of soy sauce, and uh, a bit of grated oh, carrot the inside. Soy is interesting now, and uh, it's just different. We we'll um, put a bit of chopped bacon in there, maybe brighten it up. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, chestnuts again, great thing to add. Sprouts. Um, I, I try to keep it very traditional for the, the turkey and ham, but uh, with the sides and, and other stuff, I definitely go a bit bit out there and try and do something different. And every year, change it up a little bit as well. Yeah, I know, I know. That's the challenge. Get involved, but also get a lot of pre prep done. And delegate. Okay, you're going to portion that up now. We're going to have, yeah, to, we're gonna, we have to taste it. Like. I suppose we're, we're going to have to give you a taste. Yeah, I love that pan, actually. Where'd you get that? Um, I, I think I got it in uh, Tesco's. I'm not sure, but it's um, it's an induction pan for, yeah. the, for that little countertop fella is, there. Is that, that my portion that there now? Because um, a lot of people yeah, would be very annoyed if the, they don't get it. That's the, the serving the serving portion. I suppose I'll have to give you some of the plate. And 
There it goes. I see the butter beans going in there. And the, what kind of cabbage did you call? Black cabbage? It's black cabbage. Cavallo Nero. Um, where, was it, where was it grown? The, this one. That's I, plenty, this Brian. One, that's this plenty. one is from uh, Richard's little farm in... Uh, in well, it's, it's, it's a Richard then. That's all I can say. All right. Teapot House Mallow. But we get it from Waterfall Farms and, and Kilbrack Farm, Organic Farm as well. Mm. Amazing. Now, I've also got a little tip for something you can do with a leftover Christmas pudding or Christmas cake. That is very Christmassy. It is very Christmassy, I have to isn't say. it? And, and the cabbage is gorgeous. It is. It's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Gotta fantastic get this, uh, gotta get the, we must get the, the, the recipe for all this and the instructions up online. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm, sure, I, I'm sure that Jane is probably listening and emailing to right now. Good stuff. And what's that? It's like a flattened Danish pastry or something, so is it? So it's, um, it, it's called, a, it's called a frangipan parcel and it's... Basically, do you make that? Yeah. So this is uh, the the recipe. It's 125 grams of butter, 125 grams of sugar, and 125 <laughs> grams of ground almonds. Start to take on a plate. 25 grams of uh, flour and one free range, large free range egg. And you basically you can put everything into the the mixer and mix it up into a paste. And we take the leftover Christmas pudding or the leftover Christmas cake and you can put the almond, the icing, everything into it and chop it up and mix it through it and we wrap it in a in a pastry. You can use phyllo or puff pastry and be adventurous, have a go. And yeah. and a few almonds on top and bake it in the oven. And uh it's basically it's got a Christmas flavour with a twist. So if you're sick of Christmas pudding and Christmas cake on Christmas Day, the next day or the day after. And you can make these and store them in the fridge for three it's days. It's a no super, problem. super and dessert. Well done. It's a new twist. It's just something different, as you say. Yeah. Listen, it's great. It's great for you to come in. I know it's very busy and you gotta head off to the kitchen and that. But enjoy Christmas. And undoubtedly you'll be cooking for the family. I will. I love cooking on Christmas Day. I t- it's uh it's kinda like a, it's, the ter- it's, holiday. it's therapeutic. I do it for a living, but uh, you know, chefing is a job you got to love. So yeah, yeah, you don't because yeah, the hours are long and there's a lot of pressure. There is, but it's uh, you know, this time of the year, it, it, it's pretty busy. But we've got January and February when it's a little bit quieter. Okay, well, let people have it. some of that food to taste now over the course of the next half hour or so because they're chomping at the bit here with the smell. Will. Thank you so much, Brian McCarthy. Thanks for coming in. Happy Christmas to everybody, to your family, and everybody at Greens. And you and, too, uh, Neil, and, and to all the family. Cheers, my friend. Much obliged. Back after the break on 1850-104-106. The Neil Prenderville Show.